A few days after she was born, Melba Petelio Beals encountered racism for the first time. Melba was running a 105 degree fever. A nurse should have been caring for her. But that nurse replied, we don't coddle N-word here. Despite the hostilities, Melba survived, and her grandmother said, God has a special assignment for you. Fifteen years later, after Melba transferred school, those words came true. In 1957, Melba Patillo Beals was one of nine African-American students chosen to integrate Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. As one of the Little Rock Nine, she endured shouting, angry, rock-throwing mobs, and threats from the KKK. Only Melba's faith in God sustained her during her darkest days and helped her become a civil rights warrior. In 1999, she was awarded the nation's highest honor, the Congressional Gold Medal, for her role in the integration of Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. In her latest book, I Will Not Fear, Melba shares her journey through oppression and persecution and points to faith as the solution for the world today. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Melba Patilio Beals. How wonderful to have you. My here. blessing, my pleasure. Take us back, Melba, if you will, to 1957. It's just hard for me to imagine what this must have been like. You were 15, right? Yeah, and as a child, you don't think that people, adults, behave in that way. My grandmother and mother had one word, decorum. Yes. That's all we had to say. Well, we could use a little dose of that yeah, today. That, that's we? just it. And we were at church uh, at least three days, nights a week. Yeah. And then there's Friday or Saturday prayer with soup. And there's a Sunday without excuse. Yeah. And so for me to see an adult behave, I just didn't believe. Now, I had seen someone hanged from the rafters of my church. Really? But that was when I was five. And so 10 years had passed. And so in my heart, there was no space for adults to behave as they behaved in the mob. So talk about what that was like that day. I mean, did you and eight other students were integrated into a Little Rock, Arkansas high school. Did, when you went to school that day, did you expect that to happen? What were you thinking? Did your parents prepare you? What? Not at all. No one knew that that would happen. My parents said, you know, it would be like being in any brand new school, which is you're, you're new. You're not accepted there. And so they won't like your ponytail. They won't like the color of your blouse. They may say you're not welcome. You don't wow. know the routine. But there was no preparation for the other part. Grandmother repeatedly said to me, though, wherever you go, God goes with you. Mm -hmm. Touch your right cheek. God is as close as your skin. Yeah. And so he is enjoying this first day of school with you. Mm -hmm. And he will instruct you how to respond. You know, I often think of parents who at that time sent their children, allowed their children to be the forerunners of, of integration in schools because they had to have known. I mean, they, you know, there was enough going on in the world. At 15, you're not paying attention I to a lot of that. I don't think they did. I don't, don't think, think my mother or my grandmother knew. Wow. Because had they known, they certainly wouldn't have allowed it. But here's the deal. I don't think anybody knew because initially there was no reason in Little Rock, Arkansas, there was no pre-announcement, no pre-behavior. Because in the 10 years since I had been five, things had improved a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so there was no reason to believe that there would be that kind of uprising. So here you are, you're, you're dropped off at school, you're walking in. What was that like on the outside of the school that well, day? Well, the first day, um, there were mobs. And you have to see that Central High School is eight square blocks in diameter. Wow. So the front is two blocks. And so the first, there were mobs, and we were dropped off, uh, and my mother was with me. She wanted to go with me and she was wearing her suit and carrying her valise because she was a teacher. And so we walked down and there was a deep crowd and we sort of, people were looking like this across the street and we wanted, what's that about? So we walked up behind them, expecting that they're looking at something across the street and ultimately discovered that they were looking at Elizabeth Eckford, one of the nine, petite child, five foot two or so. And she's walking along and as she's walking along, the governor has posted troops which we thought or anticipated might be to protect us. Mm -hmm. No, they were not. As soon as she tried to walk down the walk to the front door, they closed ranks. And behind them, or in front of them rather, were groups, crowds of people screaming at Elizabeth, screaming ugly words, spitting on her. When she got home, we could go like this and 
you know, rinse or clothing so up. So eventually you get inside. What's it like inside? That first day we didn't even get inside. Oh, you didn't get that inside. That first day we were chased away because ultimately the group that we were standing in, like within a few minutes of us identifying Elizabeth, they said, hey, we got us an N-word right here. We don't have to go across the street to get somebody to hang. And so it was at this point that I'm so grateful to those men because, you know, you're 14 and 15, Grandma talks about God, the minister talks about God, but you don't really, you, you hear the words, you say your prayers, but there you go. Mm. She said God was there. Was he? How was he going to be there? And it's interesting because I started right away just screaming the Lord's Prayer mm. and the 23rd Psalm because I thought no policeman's going to come and rescue me. My father can't come. Who's going to come? Only my father in heaven. I realized that right off the bat because we're being chased by a group of men who had ropes around their shoulders and under their arms, and they're telling us what they're going to do before they hang us. And so I was frightened out of my mind. So I just started screaming. I thought, the louder I talk, the faster God will hear. He will hear, and he will be here. But I thought, is he going to send like an armed group of men? Will angels swarm out of heaven? See, we always think of the blessing within our own term. And the blessing was simple. There were these uh, bushes across the walk that had fallen off tree branches. And we went around either end, but the men who behind us were so intent on getting rid of us went straight for it, and the first one flipped over. Mm. And when he flipped over, it caused a domino effect. God works and that in domino effect ways. held them up just a few wow. seconds so that we could get to the car. You know, Martin Luther King said something profound to you he at did. a later point. What did he tell you? I, it was one of those days when he came and when he walked into a room, you knew he was somewhere I was not. He was in God. He was in the Lord. He was in the peace of it all. He spoke much slower than I did, even then. And I wanted to correct his sentences. I was on the edge and I was complaining. They did this. They put S in my, they, you know, I had my list. And he looked at me and he said, Melba, don't be selfish. Mm. You're not doing this for yourself. You're doing this for generations yet unborn. And I had no idea what he was talking about. What do you mean? I'm missing the prom. Nobody's talking to me. They're calling me ugly names. And you're talking about generations. And yet that sentence mm -hmm. stuck with me and would be with me to this day. And I'm 76, which is when you're engaged in a task on behalf of the Lord Jesus, it may or may not directly relate to what your need is, but you better complete it. Wow. And you needed that through all that followed, we have merely skimmed the surface. The story is so much beyond what we can even share here, but you need to read it because it's part of our American history and we all need to understand it and get what's happened. And we need to listen to what Martin Luther King had to say. You know, we're all born for such a time as this to make a difference for generations to come. The book is called, I Will Not Fear, My Story of a Lifetime of Building Faith Under Fire. It's available wherever books are sold. Melba, thank you for oh, it's being here, for your sacrifice. I love an opportunity to talk about the Lord Jesus. What Amen. can I say? Amen. Well, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Thank you thank so you. much.